Now we're going to talk about early stage breast cancer that's ER positive, which is probably the most common form of breast cancer that we see in our practice. I mean, I would say, you know, a typical patient that comes in is someone, you know, 45, 50 years old, she has a mammogram, she has some microcalcifications, someone does an ultrasound, she's got a one or two centimeter breast cancer. You know, they do go ahead and do a lumpectomy and they do a sentinel node dissection, the sentinel node's negative, ER is strongly positive, you know, and then we decide what to do. You know, and the first thing we obviously do with these people you know, is decide whether they need chemo or not. We use those genomic tests. So let's assume for a minute that the genomic tests are, neg are low risk, mm -hmm. you know, like mammoprin or oncotype. And then what we decide to do is we say, okay, now what? Um, we put them on anti-hormonal therapy. And I think that generally, you know, we've always thought of this as benign, but again, you see them a lot, and you're the one on the other end of the line mm -hmm. after I've given them the therapy. You know, if you're a premenopausal woman on tamoxifen, you know, for example, you know, women, the big concern everybody has, even if they're premenopausal, am I going to get uterine cancer from my tamoxifen? Do you hear that a lot for people? I, I, the savvy computer people who look up side effects, yes. Yeah. And they'll say, I don't want tamoxifen under any circumstance. And we say, listen, generally if you're premenopausal and still menstruating, you're not going to get uterine cancer. Sure, anything can happen, and it has in our practice. I've seen enough people. We all have. Mm -hmm. you know, but on the other hand, the vast majority of people will be fine on tamoxifen. But what people do get, they get vaginal discharge. They get hot flashes. You know, occasionally they'll get blood clots. That's not the really big one. The big one is cramps. You know, you probably heard that from people. You know, arthralgias, a lot of arthralgias, cramps, yeah. that sort of thing. And we see many women who um, want to stop uh, because of arthralgias. Correct, but the arthralgias are more from the aromatase inhibitors. They are from tamoxifen too. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is all the postmenopause women who get aromatase mm -hmm. inhibitors, mm -hmm. and that's a biggie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you start people with an astrazole, and what I usually tell them is, you know, look, you're going to be on it. You know, for a couple months, you may get it. About 10% of people get it. 15% of people get it. It's really bad. If it doesn't go away, we'll stop it and try something else. And you know that's one of our most common conversations. You'll email me. You'll call me. You know, Mrs. X has really bad arthralgia. She wants to stop this. What should we do next? Right? Right. And then and how we, do you handle that? We, um, we like to give the patient at least a two-week break to see yeah. if the symptoms resolve on their own. <coughs> if we think it's, uh, if they resolve, then we determine that it was probably most likely the aromatics. Um, if the symptoms don't go away, then we have them follow up with their PCP to see what else could be going on. Right. Um, but we find that most women do very well on another drug right. in the same family. That's really important to say, and I think that that's something that patients don't really realize, is that there are at least three. You know, there's anastrozole, which is arimidex, letrozole, which is Femara, and exemestane, which is aromacin. Right. All three are generic now. You know, it turns out the cheapest one probably is right now anastrozole. I mean, we're really kind of surprised. I think you were so surprised as me to find out how much exemestane really costs. The generic exemestane mm -hmm. is ridiculous, but that's a whole other story. But the thing is that we can do those, those three. Mm -hmm. And if they don't do well in those three as a postmenopausal, we can always give them tamoxifen. Mm -hmm. So that's four. And there's even another one after that, teremaphine, mm -hmm. you know, feriston, which unfortunately is more expensive than tamoxifen because it's still not generic. Right. But we have five things we can give people. People don't realize that, that you can go through any one of the five. And we've had people go through all five, as you know. Right. But generally, most people will be fine, I think, with one or two. And that's why we generally tell them that. Don't give up. There's other things to do. Now, if we've gone through five, you know, all five, and they're still miserable, and we've had people like that, we have to make the determination. What is the true risk of recurrence in this patient versus, right. you know, the side effects? Because I don't want people to be miserable for five years. Right. I'm and it can be pretty that. substantial. The side yeah. effects can be Absolutely. pretty Absolutely. You know what people say? I don't know. They probably told you. I feel like an old woman. So you get that one a lot from people. I what I do hear that I didn't anticipate is a lot of a lot of people have called in with with mood. Yes, there's some mood changes, correct? And estrogen does have something to do with mood, and you are reducing estrogen from a low level in postmenopausal to zero, and even that small drop can cause mood changes. And so that mean, actually can be pretty substantial as well. And we've had to change people around to other drugs because of that. No, I agree. There's all these other things people don't really talk about.